let this get going. Fashioned up a little heat shield right here. Just because it's the first time I've had this grill so close to this um, porch post. So that little cookie sheet with that clothesline or uh, clothes hanger should work pretty good. I've also seen, you can see I've modified my uh, um, firebox here a little bit with some old cookie sheets just to kind of hold the heat a little bit better. This thing does a pretty good job, but I um, felt like it could be a little bit better. And then I took some of the existing grates I had from a different grill and put them in there to kind of give more airflow. And then another modification I did for this guy is this right here, down here is like a heat shield. Um, a lot of that heat comes right from the firebox and goes straight up right here. So this deflects it a little bit and brings it so where the whole thing's getting a proportionate amount of heat everywhere, not just one hot spot. I went ahead and added a water pan just because the last time um, it got a little warm for a little bit. So just trying to keep everything, you know, pretty consistent in there. I like to run a split pecan on there after I get my coals going. Um, main reason is I get a lot of split pecan from my brother, the pecan uh, farmer. So there's the fire. She's going. Um, once I get some nice coals, I'll add some of my split pecan and we'll get a nice smoke going. Um, temperature we're aiming for today, we're going to do a cold smoke on these. It's between about 140 to 160, somewhere in that range. like some pretty good coals. We'll go ahead and add a couple pieces of uh, split wood just to kind of get this process going and then we'll um, throw our meat on. So I like to do a couple pieces in this kind of fashion. Get some airflow under there. That's usually a pretty good little setup there and that'll burn for quite a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this, let this catch. So our wood's catching on fire right now and uh, it'll stop smoking here shortly. Like it'll give us a cleaner burn. But uh, just gonna mess with the airflow a little bit. Just give it a little bit more air. So you can see after adding that wood, this thing's smoking pretty good. So I'm gonna let that wood catch we're getting close to our desired temp i'm gonna let this come up a little bit above 150. i'm gonna open it up and put everything on the reason i'm gonna let it go above is just so it doesn't have a big issue um climbing back up after i add all this meat all right so we're sitting at about 175 so i'm gonna go ahead and open it up and uh get the meat on you can see our smoke's not too dirty i mean it's not as clean as i'd like it but it's going to be good enough for now and that fire is just going to get even cleaner as we go Oof. 
on this like this. I'm just gonna have to do what I can. While it's not ideal, I don't think it's gonna hurt much to have them in here on top of each other. Some of them might cook a little bit faster than the others, and that's okay. We can we can take some off as we go and put some on. Uh, we can flip them around, play with them. So this is about 11 pounds of meat, maybe a little bit over 11 and a half. And so there's a lot of meat on there. Um, this. This smoker's probably good for about five pounds if you wanted to not have any of them touching. But I think this is gonna have to work for now. We'll close this up, we'll let it go for an hour or so. We'll come back and check it. So, all right, so we'll let this go. We'll keep an eye on the temp. If it gets too hot, we can always just prop this firebox open, which I've had to do in the past, or shut down the damper a little bit and uh, Try to try to get it a little bit cooler in there, but not too smoky. About an hour in. Looking, yes. looking pretty good. I'm gonna flip them around, move all the ones from the top onto the bottom. Keep keep going. Got them all flipped around here. They're looking pretty good. Um, it's been about an hour and a half, so I'm gonna go about another hour and check the temp, see how they're looking. All right, we're about two and a half hours in. Um, as you can see, just sitting right above 150, 160 mark, uh, but not too hot. Let's see how our fire's doing. It's been pretty consistent. Yeah, and that's about all the logs that we need in there at once. Um, to keep this temp. Let's look at our sticks. All right, so I've noticed that some of them look like they're getting closer to done than the others. And so what I'm gonna do is start taking the internal temp of some of these and getting them into an ice bath because I don't wanna overcook some of these. So I'm gonna start doing that now and uh, let you guys know how it goes. So an issue I'm running into, is I'm getting uh, uh, hotter temp reads on this end versus this end, and that's to be expected. You know, the firebox is right there, um, so the heat is it's a little bit warmer right here. So what I'm gonna do now is kind of shuffle some of these around. I'm gonna turn on the pellet grill over here, and get some of them on here, and then I'll kind of shuffle everything that's over here, um, kind of towards the middle, towards the back end, just so that uh, I'm not cooking anything too hot too fast so i'm gonna do that now and then hopefully that'll help the process all, all together so this did a few things um one it got you know a little bit more room to work with so i got less stuff sitting on each other and now it'll give me a little bit of an easier way to take these ones off or these ones off first however it might work out. Um, and I had to do this the last time I did this too. I thought I could wiggle them all in there and get it to work, but it's just better to have more space. So what I'm gonna do now is just close this, let this run at the, the lowest temp, which is 160 on high smoke. Um, it's a little bit of a cooler day, so I doubt it ever gets that hot. What I have done in the past is um, just kind of wedge something in here so that more and more of the heat doesn't get trapped. But it does cause a lot of burnout, so I'm just gonna leave it like this and see how it does. This one, I'm just gonna, I've reshuffled some of this stuff. I'm just gonna give it a little bit longer and, and test some, be rotating those uh, links back and forth. So basically flipping them from this end, going from that end to that end, uh, maybe like every 30 or 45 minutes just so I can get some consistent uh, cook temps. But uh, yep, still going. It's gonna be uh, nice when these come off. We can uh, test them out. 
So another thing I did, um, got some meat probes, just so I don't have to keep opening this and checking. Um, but I'm basically going right there in the middle. Um, and I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm not getting too hot right there. Now, I, I do know that, like, it does cook hotter over there. So, like, I'll continue to keep flipping them around. But just kind of want to get a, a middle-of-the-road reading. And then over here, I got my two probes in. Um, and I kind of did the same thing. Went one straight in the middle on the top and then one straight in the middle on the bottom. And so with this one, I'll have to keep rotating, like, moving the bottom shelf ones to the top shelf kind of shuffling around as I, as I continue this cook as well. The um, meat probe method seems to be working pretty good. I've already set these ones to um, an internal reading of 140. One of them reached it, so I shifted everything around and just stuck it in kind of the same spot but in a different stick. So I'm trying to keep everything pretty consistent. Um, I'll let this get to 140 again and then kind of do another shuffle. Uh, same with over here. This is sitting at about 135. And so in just a few minutes or so, I'm going to open this up and shuffle everything around. We're getting really close to being almost perfect on all these meat sticks. I think moving them in here and separating the load uh, was a good idea we're all pretty close I've been rotating them as they reach certain temps so there was one reading over here on the bottom shelf that reached 150 and so I went ahead and swapped everything around just picked two random ones after that and now they're reading about the same so we're getting really really close I want to make sure I cook them all the way through and don't have any uh, undercooked meat sticks. So over here, I've been doing a similar uh, model. Just have one probe, but it's working out. Just gonna throw these into a cold ice bath here. Get my wipe off with this washcloth. Oh yeah, that's nice and chill. So, straight in. And this is going to crisp up the casings so that you get that nice snap whenever you bite into these. And it's also going to stop the cooking process so that these don't overcook. They got to an internal temp about 153, 154. Um, the ones on my offset smoker are still going. There's a few in there that just needed a little bit more time so let those roll and the reason I got this rag is kind of just clean off any of these grill marks it might be on there any of that soot this is really cold but this is kind of an important step just so you don't have dirty looking weenies snack sticks some of this stuff you can't get off but some of it you can First round of meat sticks, all dried off. Just tasted one, got a good snap. Kids wanted one, gave them some. It's got a really good flavor. Um, I just got a few left. What I did notice is those bigger Cabela's casings, um, they're taking longer to cook because, well, they're bigger and they have more meat in them. So waiting on those and then we'll be all done. I'll get these cut up and vacuum sealed up. Just pulled the last of them off. Um, man, that took all of about four and a half hours. Now I gotta cook some dinner, so uh, I gotta let these soak for a little bit longer and then I'll get them out back in the fridge, ready to cut up. 